pick up that ephod, toss it to the side to get to that sword. What was the ephod? You know what the ephod was? It was the priestly garments that the priest would wear in order to arrive at the will of God. It was the ephod that David put on himself whenever he realized, I can get the Ark of the Covenant back in Jerusalem. It was the ephod that David was wearing when he was twirling around as he was walking into Jerusalem, praising God and thanking Him for His, for his abundant mercy. It was the ephod he was wearing when his wife Michael was looking out her window, saying, what a fool the king has made this day. It was the ephod that the priest would wear whenever he didn't know what to do and he wanted to arrive at the will of God. It was the ephod that David picked up and threw aside to get to the sword. Sure, that was a great sword. Sure, God used that sword at one time in the hands of David. But you know what David needed? He didn't need some practical solution. He didn't need no sword, even though it was Goliath's sword. You know what David needed? He needed a word from the Lord. He needed God to fight his battle. No, I don't know if we've got this or not. He, had, he said, you know what, the will of God, that thing that brings the will of God, I'm tossing that aside in order to get that sword. Let me tell you this morning, there's a temptation to think, you know, I can handle my situation. There's a temptation to say, oh God, it's all right, I've got it, this is one thing that's manageable by me. Let me tell you, even those things that you think are manageable, you still need God to speak into your life. David cast it aside. You see, if you've got a maniac on the loose in your life, you don't throw it practical solution at it. You don't try to bind it or subdue it. These town folk, they try to just subdue the situation, and it did not work for them. So you know what they did? You know what we do? Whenever we can't subdue a situation, when we can't rid it out of our lives, when we can't heal it or fix it, this is the second thing that the, that the townspeople did that we do, is that they tried to tame him. Verse 4 says, neither could anyone tame him. How many of you have a pet living at your home? Come on now. How many of you have a pet living at your home? How many of you have a raccoon as your pet? You know why you don't have a raccoon as your pet? Because you can't tame them. I watched Little House on the Prairie, and I realized that when I was a kid. <laughs> you can't tame a raccoon. It's catching scorpions out in my backyard, and I'm holding insect. You can't tame. Scorpions. There was a businessman one day. He took a trip, a business trip to Mexico, and he was walking down one of the streets. And there, right there in the gutter of the of the, uh, the curving gutter, right there was this this animal. There, it was shivering. It was cold. So the man thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take care of that that animal. So he said, I'm gonna pick up that little chihuahua and wrap it up, take it home, take it back to my motel room, and. I'm going to nurse that thing back to health. And he was there for about a week in Mexico. And for about a week, he had a thing living in his room. And he was feeding it. He was drying it off and keeping it warm and everything. And just, just about the time that he was ready to release it back out outside, there was a man that walked by and said, Sir, well, what are you doing with that? And the man had it under his arm. He said, Man, well, what, what are you doing with that? And the man says, Well, I was just... This chihuahua was out there, and it was it was cold, and it looked like he was sick, and I was just, I just nursed it back to, to life, and I'm about to release it. And the man says, "Sir, that is not a chihuahua. That is a rat." He <laughs> said, "Our rats here are huge. What you have in your hand is not a is not a dog, but it's a rat." Don't know where I'm going with the story right now. <laughs> There's some things that were not meant to be tamed, that were not meant to live in your household. There are some things in your life that you were never meant to just simply coexist with. There were some things in your life that were meant to be remedied and to be fixed and to be healed. And not for you just to say, well, it just it's probably just always going to be like that. This is probably just my thorn in my flesh that God is just wanting me to live with. I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to tell you today. <clears throat> That God can heal and touch anything. Boy, you sure sound like Pentecostal church right now. God can heal and change anything. Amen. There are some things that, that were not meant for you just to try to coexist with and for, for that thing to live in your home and for that thing just to live right next to you. You know what? If you've got a broken relationship and you've been walking around saying, well, it's just it just must always be like that, Baloney. 
God can heal it. I've talked to some of you. Some of you have walked up to me with tears in your eyes saying, this thing's done. This relationship's over. Next thing you know, God's repaired that thing again. Praise God. Amen. That thing that that person did to you, the thing that that, that person did to, to your family or to your church, let me tell you something. You don't have to walk around with that thing at the forefront of your mind. You, you can have your mind healed. That thing was not meant for you to tame. That thing was not meant just for you to walk around on a leash saying, well, I, I'm just stuck with it. Baloney. You don't have to be stuck with it. You don't have to tame that thing. You know, Webster, Webster defines uh, tame as, as being to reduce from a wild to a domestic state, to be made useful to humans, to deprive of spirit. Church, there's some things that were meant to be rid out of your lives, to not to coexist with you. It's meant to be fixed. It's meant to be made whole. It's not meant for you to just say, well, it's just it's always going to be like Here's the town people. They realize, well, we can't subdue him. You know what we'll do? We'll just work on him a little bit. We'll just maybe, you know, exercise some therapy on him. Maybe we'll just talk to him and try to work this thing out. You know, there are some things, you know, that don't need the symptoms fixed, but just that need the healing. I went to the doctor the other day, a couple of weeks ago. Telling the doctor, you know, I've been having these headaches. And the doctor was asking me, well, what's going on in your life? You know, I told him all these things. And so he, he prescribed me some medicine. I went to the pharmacy, got this medicine. I was reading on the label. And actually, I, I, I found out what kind of medicine it was. I got online. I was reading up on this medicine. And you know what I found about this medicine? This medicine works on, on your mind to where it, it, it does not take away the headache. But what it does is it affects your brain to where you think differently about your headache. <laughs> I'm going to repeat this again. It doesn't take away your headache. But it just makes you okay with your headache. It gives you a better attitude about your headache. I got something I want to show you this morning. I went in my medicine cabinet. This, this, you're going to think I would falling off my rocker right here, but it's going to be okay for preachers to do that from time to time. I went in my medicine cabinet. We've got something for everything. <clears throat> is, your, is your belly aching today? we got something for that. Uh, you got headache relief. we got something for that. Um, if you don't want to swallow a pill, you can drink some of this stuff. If you've got a diaper rash, we got something for that. If, if, if Phillips milk and magnesium doesn't work, but we've got some of these antacids that you can use. Uh, you got a cold, you can rub some of this in your chest, and it will just open up your lungs. It's awesome. You can cleanse out your colon with this stuff. Eyes <laughs> itchy. We got some Benadryl right here. Uh, we got some nasal spray if your if your if your nasal pass plane. I'll give this to you after service. <laughs> If you're having trouble sleeping, Vix 44, you take a shot of that, man. It is <laughs> sweet night. <laughs> we got some Theraflu here. If none of that stuff's working, we can take that. Uh, we got some stool softener here. You know what that's all about. <laughs> we got some na nausea control if you feel like barfing this morning. All we got here is we just got just basic pain relief. On every one of these labels, every one of them, it tells you that it does not take away your illness. But it relieves symptoms. Now, one of these medicines, when you ingest it, rid your body of the virus, of the sickness that you have. It just eases the symptoms. For some of these things, the only thing that it does is it just makes you feel better about your sickness. God did not send his son to live 33 and a half years on this earth and not commit one sin, to be arrested after not committing one crime, to have his back beaten until it was raw, and, and, and be crucified on a cross. 
just so that I can feel better about my sickness. But the Bible says, by his stripes, I am healed. It doesn't say, by his stripes, I feel better about my illness. It says, by his stripes, I am healed. God did not send his son just so that he can help me with some of my symptoms. But he came so I might have a fundamental change and a fundamental healing at the core of who I am. Not just so I can feel better about my sin. Not just so I can feel better about my sickness. Not just so I can feel better that, that even though my relationship's all messed up, I, well, at least I can sleep at night. God came so that you and I could be whole. And bless God, I'm preaching to myself because, you know what, it, it is easy to take medicine and think, well, you know what, this medicine will help me. And before I know it, I'm leaning more on that medicine and I'm relying upon the power of God's healing in my life. Amen. You know what i found? Is that we really don't need Jesus anymore. Pastor, what did you just say? I think our lives express it from time to time that, you know, when it comes down to it, I really don't need Jesus anymore. There was a day, church, before all this stuff was invented. And I, once again, I'm thankful for all this stuff because I may have to use some of the stuff that's ever been in. I don't know. I'm thankful for this stuff. But there was a day when none of that stuff existed, where mothers held their children in their bosom didn't have acetaminophen to give them, didn't have ibuprofen to give them, didn't have an epipen to give them whenever they're having an attack. You know, their only, their only source was Jesus. There was a day when we saw more healings because we didn't have Plan B sitting over here on the table and all these fancy colorful bottles. There was a day when we didn't have anything else to fall back on but Jesus. There was a day when it was Jesus, when we didn't have therapists to cry on their shoulder. It was Jesus that we relied upon. There was a day when we didn't look to tame things, but we needed Jesus. Church, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what you've got to do. I don't know what you've got to change. But if there is anything that you're leaning on more heavily than God, than the Holy Spirit, than Jesus, trust Him once again. Trust Him once again. He can heal your relationships. He can heal your body. How many of you know that the Holy Spirit speaks? How many of you believe in a word of knowledge? How many of you believe that hope that the Holy Spirit can speak directly to us? Somebody this morning needs to be reminded. You can't be healed. You can't be healed. I know what the doctors have been saying. I know at this point... I, I understand your history. God understands your history. We know what you've endured. It's not to say you've lied. It's not to say that, well, it really wasn't that bad to begin with. I, some of you are dealing with some heavy physical issues right now. But let, let me remind you today. Let us believe in the same God we sung about a few minutes ago. How great is our God. How great is our God. If he can save my soul, surely he can, he can heal me of my headaches. Surely if he can save my soul, he can repair a relationship. Surely if he can do something as great as changing my eternal destination. Surely he can take care of some of these other things. These things are not meant for you to tame or have your symptoms taken care of. God came so that you could be free and that you could be whole. These people tried to subdue him, tried to tame him, and they realized that that wasn't working. So the third thing that they did was they kind of just swept him under the rug. Verse 5 says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. Here is this very sad picture of a man who had his community work on him and help him finally just throw up their arms, and they gave up on him. Well, he's... He's not here in the town anymore. He is out the tombs. We don't have to deal with him anymore. But I'm telling you something. It must have been haunting at night whenever this community went to bed at night and in the middle of the night they can hear him howling and crying to God. It must have been haunting. Let me tell you something. Just sweeping things under the rug, out of sight, out of mind. Well, at least I don't have to see that person anymore. Well, you know, they live out in California. I don't have to see them anymore. Let me tell you something. Even late at night, even though they may live in California, I still hear their voice. Some of you, you, 
people that have, that have been your thorn in your flesh, the thorn